Hello everybody, or anybody that's watching. These are my final thoughts on Track Xiaomi after spending some time with it. I gotta say the game is a missed opportunity of sorts. The the scenery, the, the gameplay is pretty decent. The scenery is what's best. The cinematic black and white 2.5D, it's not quite 3D um, aspect of it. Um, how everything looks is absolutely great. The game feels great, it's got good atmosphere. Um, all the dialogue's in Japanese, which is which fits the atmosphere even better. Uh, I kind of wish I could have an English option because then I didn't have to look at the the subtitles, but I did sort of two playthroughs so I can get through by reading and seeing what's going on in the story. The story is really good, by the way. So I can watch the whole game. Instead of watching the text, I can watch the whole game for the second time and sort of, sort of still know what's going on. So that aspect, yeah, it's more authentic in Japanese, which sounds a lot better, really. The voice acting is great, but I would like an English option. But normally if that happens and it's put in the end, the English option is not very good. But as a cinematic piece, it's absolutely fantastic. At the beginning, the cutscenes outstayed their welcome, just a touch. Just a little bit, there's something I've gone to dislike in games a lot now. I remember the back in the day of like Metal Gear Solid 4. The uh, cutscenes could really outstay their welcome there. You might as well just get the popcorn, sit back and watch a movie at that point. They were good, but yeah, like these days I've gone to the point where I like to keep interacting with the game while the dialogue's happening. But a lot of that does happen in the game, so it's great. In the beginning, like cutscene heavy, after that it dies down, so it was pretty good. That was all the good parts of the game. Like I said, as a cinematic piece, it looks fantastic in black and white. The 2.5D is absolutely great. That's the good stuff about it, but what stops it from being a 100% good game has got to be the combat. Now, throughout the whole game, the combat the combat is... Well, the start, it's pretty bare bones. You can't do much. Uh, normally in every game, kind of the same. No problem. But then you get developing some skills and then the enemies you fight you 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 kind of start using skills that you've learned and you think it oh great and then you find this is where the problem starts you find that one good skill that kills the enemies really quickly and i found myself literally using the parry system and using um the quick kill option to literally just delete everything in my path. Then I found if you time just your uh, your best combo and stagger them, use the finishing blow. Which finishing blows look cool. If you just time them well before the enemy even attacks you, you can just delete them. And that's it was kind of a repeated process. So the combat lacks there. Uh, it is. It conditions you to use the parry system, which is fine. Uh, Sekiro did it, but I think Sekiro had more of a flow to it. This one sort of doesn't have the same flow. The combo was hard to get used to to start with, but there's a slowdown animation when you do the parry. So you know when you've successfully parried. I suppose that's pretty good. You've got to have some, some way to detect a, a successful parry. But like I said, you use the parry, you use the same combo, you constantly just get used to it just to delete enemies to get going once you started mixing up the combat system you died quickly well for me that's how it was anyway moving on from there the boss fights boss fights are really good um the boss fights you use like the combat system that's where the combat system changed up that's where the combat system you couldn't use the finishing blows then you had to use good combos in succession to just do as much damage as you can before you know the boss is going to um, attack you again and you can dodge away roll away whatever but rolling is something the dodge roll is something you the game does not condition you to use and there's one particular boss you use it in one boss before this i'll try and show it on screen and then the boss afterwards this is quite a late game and the game has definitely conditioned you to use that parry system and that's basically it and this boss is a bitch the, the boss fight it's got a dodge roll system but there's no iframes in the roll so me and my old dark souls brain 
thinking, yeah, press roll at the right time, I'll just dodge right through that shit. But you don't. It will still hit you, so you've got to roll. You, as soon as you see the attack, as soon as you see the boss perform the attack, you need to roll away. Or roll through. If you don't, it'll clobber you. But on that boss in particular, I'll show it on screen. It should be on screen anyway. In this boss in particular, he had hitboxes worse than Dark Souls 2. This bitch destroyed me so many times and I had to just change my combat tactics totally. And it's, it's refreshing to get a different combat style. But there was some bullshit things in this boss fight. He just destroyed me and he, did, he barely touched me at some point. I was like, what? And the amount of health they take off was quite damaging as well. And I was playing on the hardest difficulty, so I, I didn't expect it to be easy. But God, that, that boss fight really rubbed me the wrong way. And I just had to put, after I beat him, after like try number 20, beat him, I put the controller down, backed out. <laughs> and that was it for me for the night. I was like, nah, 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 I'm not playing this anymore. I, it, that boss fight left a bit of a bit of taste in my mouth. But it, was, it wasn't that bad. It didn't take away from the game too much. This is my gripes of the combat. Just that it conditions you all the way to use the parry system. And all of a sudden you've got to do this whole brand new tactic. Which gets refreshing. But Jesus, you have to learn how to fight all over again. But towards the end of the game, great. There's more cool scenery. Especially escaping Yomi. I think it is. Yeah, escaping Yomi. Just so such cool scenes. Everything is great. Small puzzles here and there just to get get going. The game's not too long. I'd say if you're playing in a normal mode, you're going at about five hours maximum. I think it's about five, maybe six hours. So I've died a lot. But yeah, very enjoyable. Uh, I'd suggest pick it up. It's free. It's on Game Pass. Um, it's about fifteen British pounds. No, that's about twenty dollars, thereabouts. Maybe eighteen dollars. I'm not too sure. Uh, definitely worth it. The game's really good. Uh, I wouldn't put it down just for its combat. Um, the scenery is well worth it. But definitely, I'm gonna give it another playthrough. Uh, I played on PC through Windows um, Game Pass. Played absolutely perfect, no problems. Uh, it's available on all storefronts. Uh, I think Nintendo's the only one it's not available for. Sorry, Nintendo guys. But I think it's because they're fifteen pounds everywhere, or fifteen ninety nine everywhere. Steam, PlayStation, on Xbox, and it's on, available on Game Pass as well. Um, and you're crazy if you don't get it on Game Pass because it's a great game. And that's my thoughts for Trek to Yomi. I thought it was a fantastic game. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.